In a market in Myanmar, vendors display wares you won't find at your local market. Rows of bear paws and gallbladders, big cat teeth, and one of the most expensive items, a dismembered tiger penis. $1,500 for this. Carl Amann is a Swiss-born conservation activist and photographer by trade. Through his photographs and website, he spent the bulk of his career shedding light on issues such as the illegal trade in animal meat in Africa. Recently, he traveled to Mong La, a town in Myanmar, formerly Burma, along the border with China. Even after nearly 20 years of documenting the worldwide animal trade, nothing could have prepared him for what he found there. This is probably the worst example I've seen anywhere else in terms of live animals, in terms of meat. There isn't too much today, but I've seen a lot more. Many illegally traded species will end up in traditional Chinese medicines. The use of such medicines is said to date back thousands of years and has played a major role in the depletion of species like tigers, rhinos and Asian bears. And the demand for them shows no signs of slowing down. Globally, the trade in wildlife is a multi-billion dollar business, and it's booming. But nowhere else in the world is it booming more than in Asia. I don't think it's her store. We don't all are, don't OK, you're not happy? OK, I'm not happy either. It makes two of us. Experts say China is the premier consumer in the illegal wildlife market. While some of the animal's body parts will end up as souvenirs, most will be used to make Chinese medicines or will be eaten in exotic animal restaurants. Conservation groups like the World Wildlife Fund know the threat to wildlife all too well. The thing is it's this large-scale industrial extraction of wildlife. It's almost like wildlife mining. Um, Anything that can be captured, anything that can be traded is being sucked out of these countries and is going to these consumer markets. Mong La's close proximity to China makes it an ideal trading place for wild animals. Tourists easily cross the border into Myanmar, filling up on their grisly finds. But the time spent at a bear bile farm outside of Mong La left the deepest impression on Amman. The bile, milked through a permanent catheter placed in the bear's stomach, is taken from Asian black bears. It's then used sure. in Chinese medicine. This is this uh, bear bile farm in Mong La, and it's really about the worst animal welfare scenario I have ever encountered. I mean, this is not the question of survival of some hunters. This is a question of really commercial business, trying to make a fast buck all wild caught bears, so no excuse as far as the Chinese are concerned. You know, what's even worse this time is the fact that they now seem to rub their heads against the cages. A lot of them have their heads chaffed off from this rubbing. These bears and many other wildlife species found in the markets are protected from trafficking through CITES, or the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species. Both China and Myanmar are signers of the convention, Yet many of their citizens show flagrant disregard for the agreement, and there's been little enforcement by the respective governments. Along the border, more bears are kept in tiny cages, awaiting the day when they will be killed for meat or die due to sickness. The illegal wildlife trade is said to be worth billions of US dollars each year in Southeast Asia alone. For threatened species, the wildlife trade is a massive problem. Many species, like tigers, mountain gorillas, and rhinos, are simply disappearing. Illegal wildlife trade is having a major impact upon species in Asia. Wildlife is being taken from its home in the forest, transported very quickly to consumer markets, and being consumed at an incredible rate. There are no checks and balances and controls in place in many places to stop this. We are really concerned that we're going to see some empty forests for the future. There may be forests left, but there'll be no wildlife left. Although the Myanmar and Chinese governments have taken some steps in the past to protect species captured for the wildlife trade, without greater pressure from the international community, 
Some experts remain in doubt as to how much more these governments will do to remedy the problem.